Have you heard of the Ewe people? Or perhaps you've heard their name pronounced Ewe, E-W-E. Who are they according to the Bible? Are they Japhetites? Are they Hamites? Or are they Shemites? My name is Seiram Ajanku, and I am here to tell you about the Ewe people. The Ewe speaking people are mainly found in Ghana, Togo, southern Benin, and southwestern Nigeria. The history is passed down through oral tradition, which is retold during family gatherings and festivals. European explorers have on numerous occasions documented that the histories and customs of the Ewe people are Hebraic. Prior to the transatlantic slave trade and colonization, Ewe land stretched from Accra to Lagos in modern day Nigeria and was dubbed the Kingdom of Judah. During the transatlantic slave trade and colonization, it was also called the Slave Coast. But to the people, it is simply Ewe Nigba, meaning Ewe land. The word Ewe is what became the word Hebrew. If we do a simple etymological search on the word Hebrew, what we will find is that it is Old English, which derives from Old French, which derives from Latin, which derives from Greek, which derives from Aramaic, and then from Hebrew. And the Hebrew rendition is Eve, or some pronounce it Eber or Aver or Eber. And it is spelled I bet Chesh, which is E, B or V, R, which is Eve. Now, another phonetic spelling of the word Eve is He, Vav, He, which is H, W, H or H, V, H, because we know that in Hebrew, the W and the V are interchangeable. And having knowledge of the Ewe language, we have the phonetic V, which is a, a cross between a W and a V. And so you have H, V, H, which then gives us the pronunciations Ewe, E-W-E, Ewe, E-V-E, -E, or Ewe, which are all ways that the name of the people are pronounced, Ewe. Our name is found in the name of the Most High. The tetragrammaton yud he vav he has our name Eve embedded in it. If you take a look at it, he vav he is right there in yud he vav he. And we have a scripture that's in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So this is a call to all of us, all those who are part of the Hebraic family, the Israelite family, we are called to turn and come back to the Most High. And we are the people whose name who are found in his name, whose na who are called by the Most High's name. The Ewe people celebrate an exodus each year. Their various clans call it various things. The Anglo clan, for example, calls it Hogbe Chuchu. The Ziavi call it Avazoli. There are others who call it Glimetutu, and it all means the same thing. It is the exodus that they are celebrating. They are aware that they are an exilic people who came from far away. They will tell you they came from the northeast of Africa, sojourned in Abyssinia and present-day Nigeria before spreading further into West Africa, so meaning the Homey which is present-day Benin, Togo, and present-day Ghana. Their most, most celebrated exodus today is their exodus out of the place that they called Ngochi. 
Although this noche is known to be located in present-day Togo, the clues in the oral tradition indicate that the exodus occurred out of Egypt and not at the present location of Ngoche. The oral tradition goes like this. At Ngoche, we were enslaved under the rulership of a wicked king who gave us impossible tasks to complete. One of those tasks was to make bricks out of clay in which the wicked king had had thorns mixed. Resolute to change their situation and liberate themselves from bondage, they followed a leader who being the sole survivor of the ordered massacre and extinction of the Ebe elders, was able to lead them out of their land of captivity. Ngoche means pierced through water. Ngochi. This narrative is packed with elements of the exodus of the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. The name Ngoche alone is a reflection on Moses' action of parting the sea through the power of the Most High Yah. Moses was the sole documented survivor of the massacre of the Hebrew boys of his age. Pharaoh was said to have increased the burdens of the Hebrews who were slaved, who were enslaved during his reign. So those are some of the elements which appear in the Eve oral tradition of their exodus, their migration into their, their present day locations. Now tracing the migration route of the Eve. This is a map with some place names of some of the locations that the Eve mentioned that they sojourned or where they came from. We'll start from the northeast in the land, the present day land of Israel, which is pronounced Kana, which is called Kana. It is known as Kana in Eve culture. We find it in Eve music, in the drumming and dancing. So in Eve, we will see that the, the names of these locations have their meanings in Eve, and they actually corroborate what the scripture says about those locations. So Kana means the soil yields or the soil provides. That is the meaning of Kana. And that corroborates the story, the biblical narrative of how the soil of Kana was so fertile at the time that it took two grown men to carry one cluster of grapes. Moving further west, we go down to what is called Egypt. The Egyptian name for Egypt is Keme, and the biblical Hebrew name for Egypt is Michri. Michri. Now, in Eve, we have both the Egyptian name and the Biblical Hebrew name in the Eve language. We have to remember that the Israelites stayed in Egypt for hundreds of years. Keme means in within the soil, but it also means the people of the soil, Keme. Now, Michri, some may pronounce it misery but in Eve it is Michri. Michri means you plural avoid it. You all avoid it. That is the biblical Hebrew name for Egypt. And we know why if we are Bible scholars, we know that on numerous occasions, the Israelites were cautioned not to flee into Egypt. They were to avoid, abstain from Egypt, both physically and spiritually. And they were to abstain from the Egyptian lifestyle. Now, moving down further south in the Nile Valley, where is present day Sudan, Northern Sudan, we have a place called Khartoum. In Eve, Khartoum is Ketume. Ketume means in within the soil. It means, actually, it means in the bowels of the soil, too. Ketume. Now, from there, the ever say they sojourned in Abyssinia, which is present day Ethiopia. Now, there is a very interesting location on the map, which is uh, labeled as Seme 
in the center of the map. This seme shows up in John Ogilvie's book, Africa, an Accurate Description, and the book is dated in the mid 1600s. In the book, John Ogilvy mentions that there are Jews who live in this Seme area, although he pronounces it Semen, but in Eve it is Seme. And the borders of this Seme are said to be uh, to the north by the desert, to the east by Abyssinia, to the south by the equinoctial line, which goes down into the Congo, the DRC, and to the west by the Dahomey Empire. So that pretty much comprises most of West Africa. Now, this name is interesting because this Seme is the same name as Shem. The name that is pronounced Shem by our biblical scholars is the same name Seme. The S and SH are interchangeable. So that's why people say Semites and some people say Shemites. So the Shemites or Semites were actually found in Africa, in the center, in the middle of Africa at a point in time. Now, we move further west, we find Ife. Ife is a place in modern day Nigeria which uh, in Yoruba language means love. Now, moving further west, we find a few towns in the Benin area. We have Ketu. Ketu is a short form of Ketume. This is another habit of the Ebe people where they take the name places by previous names that they knew. So we find Ketu, which is a repetition of Ketume, which is in the Nile Valley. And we find Kana. Kana, just like in the original homeland. Kana is historically, that was the last location where the French army fought the Dahomey the women warriors before they took the capital of Agbomi. We have to realize that they had attempted defeating them many, many times. And this was the time when they finally were able to have victory over our Dahomeyan women. And that was in 1892. Now, moving further west, we have Tado. Tado means the head has arrived. And that is uh, somewhere on the border of Togo and Benin. And then in Togo also you have Ngoche, which is not featured on this map, but Ngoche is in Togo as well. And then we have Keta. Keta is the place where the Anglo clan of the Epes mostly settled. They have many other towns, but they are mostly known for Keta. Now we will talk about some of the customs. And the Ever people observed many customs and uh, mo they are all mostly Hebraic customs. These are just a few of those customs that they observe. They are a patrilineal society, meaning your tribal identity is tied to your father for the most part. And we see that in First Chronicles from chapter one to chapter nine. That is the theme of the Bible. The tribal identity is tied to one's father. You are of the tribe of your father if you are not if you are an Eve. Now there are certain exceptions where the the person will adhere to their mother's tribe. So if they are Eve, the mother is Eve and the father is not Eve, the person may adhere to the mother's tribe and be considered an Eve that is practiced even till today. But for the most part, it is patrilineal, hands down. Now we observe male circumcision, mostly on the eighth day and usually 
always done latest by toddlerhood. But most people, most ever people, have their sons circumcised on the eighth day and named on the eighth day. The children are named on the eighth day as well. We see this happening in Genesis 17, verse 9 to 10. The practice of the separation of women during their menses and after childbirth. We see that in Leviticus 15, verse 19 to 21. And in fact, the very word for menses in Eve is chigboto, and it literally means remain separate, remain uh, outside the, the compound in, in essence. So it just indicates that there has to be a separation. They practice deliberate marriage. A man can inherit his deceased brother's wife to produce offsprings in his name. And this is found in Genesis 38 from verse 6 to 8, where we get the narrative of uh, Judah's uh, son, Ur, passing, and his brother, Onan, is made to perform the duties of a, of, of, um, of his, of a brother-in-law um, and marry Tamar, right? So we see that practice there. Now, the practice of knocking, that is the Hebraic marriage process. It's called knocking, and that is what it's called in Eve. It's called hopofo. Hopofo means knocking. We find this uh, account in uh, Genesis 24. It is the story of how uh, Rebe Rebecca was married to Isaac. The practice of the token of virginity. Deuteronomy 22 from verse 13 to 19. The practice of the avenger of blood and the city of refuge. This is practice. This was practiced by the Eve people and we find it in Numbers chapter 35. The separation of the lepers and those all those with uh, contagious skin diseases. They are made to not mingle with the rest of the of the ever people. The dietary observances, Leviticus 11. Mandatory purification rites after touching a dead body, Numbers 19 verse 11 to 12. Pouring of libation or the drink offering and animal sacrifice, Numbers 28 verse 7. There, there are many other scriptures, however, we will just keep to these ones. The trial by God's water, which is similar to the bitter water that is mentioned in Numbers chapter 5, verse 27. So these are just a few of the customs that the Eve people practice, which are Hebraic. They do the same thing, and uh, there are many, many more. The language. The language of the Eve people is called Eve Gbe. Gbe means language in Eve language. So Eve Gbe is Eve language. Our language has been classified by Europeans, and they, they have classified the Eve language under the Kwa branch of the Niger Congo family of languages. Other classifications mention uh, it being under the Voltaic branch of the Niger Congo family of languages. Nevertheless, that is not our own classification. This is classification that was made for us. When we ourselves study the languages of our neighbors, of our the tribes that are uh, surrounding us, and even down into the Congos in the uh, with some of the Bantu languages, we find that there are a lot of similarities. We have to belong to the same family. So, the Eve language is spoken in Ghana. It is spoken in Togo and Benin and southwestern Nigeria. Wherever the Eve people are found, they speak the Eve language. And it is also taught in universities in Germany, in the UK, and in the US. 
There are many dialects, but mostly all mutually intelligible. The Anglo dialect is used for writing. That has always been the, the dialect that is used for writing. And Anglo actually means scribe. Now, we do have a modern writing system and it is based on Latin alphabet. Our ancient writing system was mainly pictographic and we still see remnants of it in the weaving and in pottery and in other arts. So what we've also observed is that all of the characters in the ancient Hebrew pictographs have their direct meaning in the Eve language while still maintaining the sound that they are uh, said to represent. And we'll see that in the next few slides. Let's take, for example, the letter A, which the pictographic character is pronounced Aleph in the Hebrew. This is ancient Hebrew uh, pictograph, and it is a depiction of what they say is an ox head. And they say it means strength or leader, and, and it represents an ox. In Eve language, Ale is sheep. It's not ox for us, it's sheep. And Aleta means the sheep's head. Aleta already, it sounds like letter. We'll move on to the next one. The next pictographic character is pronounced Bet. This is the ancient Hebrew pictograph, Bet, and it's said to represent a house or shelter. In Eve, the word be means to hide. Be means to hide or take shelter. So we see that Eve is directly ancient Hebrew. Let's do one more. The character Ain. It's pronounced Ain by the uh, Hebrew scholars. And it's said to represent an eye and to represent experience or to see. And we clearly see that the pictograph looks like an eye. But in Eve, Ayi means bean, like black eye pea. It means black eye pea. And the black eye pea is very much uh, a, an important staple in the Eve diet. And we see that even in the diaspora, those who have been removed from Everland for hundreds of years, they still maintain the culture of having black eyed peas as a staple in their diet. In Eve, Ayi is black eyed pea. And the kernel of the black eyed pea is called the eye. It's called Nku. Nku is the eye. And looking back at the pictograph, not only is the pictograph representing an eye, it's also clearly representing a black eye pea. This is Eve and it is ancient Hebrew. So here we have a table. The column on the on the left, starting from the left, the first column represents the transliterated name. So the names as we have them today in our Bibles. The second column is the name in the Masoretic text spelled uh, with consonants. The third column is the meaning ascribed to the name. And the fourth column is the the name restored back into the Eve language, meaning this is what it is in Eve. And the fifth column is the meaning in Eve. And the sixth column is some scriptures uh, that uh, prove those meanings. So let's start with the name of Adam. Adam is uh, said to mean man and it is spelled A-D-M. And in Eve, we have Adim and Edim. Adim and Edim are the same thing. They mean he looks like me. He, she, it looks like me. And we find the scripture for this in Genesis 1 uh, from verse 26 to 28. 
it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So that is the meaning of the name Adam. It means this human being is going to be made to look like me, me meaning himself, the most high Yah. The second name is Chawa or Chava. We know it as Eve in our Bibles today, but the name is actually Chawa. And it is uh, said to mean a living being, a living being. In Eve, Chawa means made from the side, made from from side. It is Chawa or Chawo. It's the same thing made from the side. The scripture is in Genesis chapter 2 from uh, actually from verse 18 uh, and it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and I will insert Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. 22, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. 23 and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man all right so we have in Eve her name means taken from the side that that is Chawa now the word Hebrew, the name Hebrew, or others may say Eber or Ever, uh, is Eve. That is the next name, Eve. And we touched on this earlier. And that is the name that is also sp phonetically spelled Hevav He, which is in the name of the Most High, which is Yud Hevav He. And so literally the people who are called by the Most High's name are called Eve, which is called Hebrew today. That means we as a Hebraic people, we all are Eve people. Whether we speak Eve or not, whether we're from Ghana, Togo, Benin, and Nigeria or not, we are Hebraic people because we know that the people that this is about were scattered to the four corners of the earth. Now, what is interesting also is that this name, Eve, which is E-V-R, is said to mean a region beyond, so indicating a geographical location. The name Eve means something in the language Eve. It means valley, a valley. And so that just tells us, that just gives us a detailed understanding of this region, of this geographical location. It's telling us of the topography of the place. Mean, that is, is that it is a valley that is beyond. That is where the people or the, uh, this ancestor is from. The next name is called, pronounced Jacob. And it's said to mean supplanter and it is spelled Y-A-K-B. In Eve, it is Yakobe. Yakobe means Yah hides you, or himself hides you. And when we contemplate on the life of Jacob, we can see how he was trying to hide from his brother Esau ever since he took the blessing and Esau was out to get him. But the Most High hid him and protected his life on numerous occasions and Esau was never able to gain him, to, to uh, uh, defeat him. And the same way the Most High hid him from other adversaries as well. But we do see that later his name is changed 
to Israel. Now the next name is Esau. Esau is spelled E-S-W. Ein Shin Val. And it's said to mean hairy. In Eve, there can be two many there are actually two meanings. The first one is Esowu. Esowu is a horse, horse pelts, mean a, you know, to uh, uh, emphasize the idea of the hairiness that is horse pelt. However, the more plausible meaning, the, the actual meaning of the name, which is Esau, is actually pronounced Esau in Eve. And Esau means he is perfect or complete. He is perfect of, or complete. Now, naturally, when we consider twin births, the first one to come out generally is the more healthy and perfect looking one. And the second one to come out is usually the more feeble and not so robust and, you know, as healthy as the, the first one. So culturally, this already gives us an understanding of why he would be called Esau. He was the first twin and he was the strong hunter. And the uh, we have some scriptures that back up his name. We have Genesis 25, verse 25. And we also have Jasher chapter 26, verse 14. The, the scripture in Jasher is very interesting because it speaks directly to the meaning, the other meaning of the name Esau, which is Esau. And it says, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And all the people of the land called his name Esau, saying that this one was made complete from the womb. Complete from the womb. There we have the Ebe language directly in the scripture of Jasher. Esau means he is complete. Now, let's take a look at the name Levi. It is pronounced Levi in his L-V-Y, Lamed Vav Yod. And it, it's said to mean joined in the concordance. It's said to mean joined. In Eve, Alevi, Alevi means a lamb. Now, Avulevi, Avulevi, means a child born to pacify or to appease a situation. Culturally, the other people name their children based on circumstances, the situation surrounding the birth of such a child uh, will tell us what the child should be named. And we see this happening in the life of Levi. And we see this as a biblical Hebraic culture as well. There are a couple of scriptures, Genesis 29 verse 34 and Leviticus 4 verse 23. We'll look at the Genesis scripture. It says, and she conceived again and bare a son and said, now this time will my husband be joined unto me, using that uh, definition given uh, by, the, uh, by the concordance, um, that said Levi or Levi means joined. And I read on. Because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. So in the Ebe perspective, we have now this time will my husband be pacified because I have borne him three sons. Why would this child be named Levi or Levi, the pacifier, according to the Eve perspective? Well, because Leah, his mother, was the daughter who was given to Jacob dubiously. She was slid into the bed and Jacob thought it was Rachel. And so Jacob has always resented that 
uh, action by Leah and her father. And he always favored Rachel. And so now we see in the scripture, Leah is saying, after I have borne him three sons, he must surely, he must surely be pacified now. That grudge that he held should, will no longer be in existence. And we know that at this point, Rachel was still barren. So the Eve language takes us back to the culture and it takes us back to the deeper meaning of the scripture. So now let's answer the question of the topic. And the question was, who are the Eve people? And the answer is simply that the Eve people are Israelites of the Bible. Thank you for having me. Yajira Nami. God bless you. So here are my links. I have teachings on h2ntv.com as well as YouTube. And I do post some write-ups on Instagram and on Facebook.